Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're back in the kitchen today and today we're going to make a bread loaf that I really enjoy. It makes great toast. It actually makes good sandwiches, even if it can get a little messy if you don't bake it quite long enough. I'm going to make a savory pesto roll. They are delicious, full of pesto, and have a really nice swirl of pesto right in the middle. They also have basil in the dough and a little bit of wheat germ to really punch up the flavor of the dough itself. We're going to make it in the bread maker. You can make it by hand like you can any other uh, bread, but I'm going to use the bread maker because I can and because it will just help me skip a few steps so I won't have to knead it myself because I don't really want to today. Anyway, let's get started. First thing we want is one tea teaspoon, not tablespoon, one teaspoon of salt. I used Himalayan pink salt. You can use any salt you like. We want two teaspoons of dried basil. Don't use fresh. Do not use fresh. You definitely want dried basil in this case. Now we're going to want two tablespoons of honey. I'm going to squeeze it directly from the container. That's one. And then we're going to do a second one. There we go. Two tablespoons of honey. And then we're going to do two tablespoons of olive oil. Yes, do use olive oil. There we go. Olive oil gives this bread a really, sorry for the buzzer, that's the dryer. But olive oil gives this bread a really nice flavor, so do use your olive oil. We're going to add one and a quarter cups of water. The reason we're adding a little extra water this time is because of the next two ingredients. We have a quarter cup of wheat germ. You can get that at your local grocery store. And half a cup of rolled oats. There we go. That absorbs the extra liquid. That's why we have a little bit of extra liquid. We do need just that little bit of extra water. Now we're going to do three cups of flour. Just all purpose or bread flour, whatever you're using. Regular flour. And now we're going to do one heaping teaspoon of yeast. I am using bread machine yeast. You can also use quick rise. If you're doing it by hand, you certainly can do a traditional yeast where you dissolve the yeast in the water first. I'm not doing that because I'm using the bread maker. We're going to pop this in the bread maker where, where it will mix, knead, and rise the dough. After its first rise cycle, we'll come back and I'll show you how to shape your pesto roll. All right, our dough is ready. It feels kind of like a marshmallow, so it has risen properly. We want to squeeze it to get all that air out. Okay, you don't want to leave any air in it. So give it a nice, strong squeeze. Okay, once you're sure all that air is out, I've already been working it for a couple minutes before I started recording. You just kind of roll it into a ball, set it aside for a minute. We'll get back to this in a second. Right now we're going to make our pesto filling. So what we need for our pesto filling is two tablespoons of olive oil. And yes, I'm going to mix it in my magic bullet. I'll put a link to the magic bullet on the, in the description. It is fantastic for doing something like this because I'm just going to need to whir all these ingredients together to create our pesto. So you want two tablespoons. That's about one. It's about two. It's okay if you go a little bit over, don't go under. So about two tablespoons of olive oil. You want one tablespoon of dried parsley. You do want all of these herbs to be dry, by the way. Two teaspoons of dried basil. One teaspoon of dried garlic. About one teaspoon of dried chives. That's the entirety of that little bottle. I'll refill it in a bit. And then you want about a tablespoon of pine nuts. Okay, you can go a little bit over. Mine are kind of packed in here, so you gotta move them around to get them moving. So you can go a little bit overboard if you need to, don't worry about it. Pine nuts are really important to this pesto. If you don't add the pine nuts, it's gonna kind of be a lackluster pesto, not very good. You do need those pine nuts. So I'm using the magic bullet. So I'm just tightening this. Put the blade on. Stick it on here, and we're just going to pulse it a few times until everything looks pretty creamy. You want everything blended together really well, and you want those pine nuts chopped up. 
So I'm going to turn the volume on the video down so you don't have to hear the sounds the magic bullet makes because it's kind of annoying. But I'm just going to pulse it till it looks exactly the way I want it to look. All right, that's about how I want it to look. I don't want it completely smooth. You do want it to have some texture. So when you pulse, you control how much these things all get bashed up. All right, so you don't want to just click it and let it go because it'll get too thin. So set that aside. We don't need the magic bullet anymore. We're done with that. Now we need our dough. You're going to take your dough and you want to make it about as wide as you want your loaf of bread. So if you want a 12 inch loaf of bread, you're going to want to go about 12 inches wide. So we're just going to kind of stretch it kind of like you're making pizza, but you're going to make a rectangle. So if you want a 12 inch loaf, you'll go about 12 inches wide. Then you're going to want to stretch it up and down. There we go. Give it a nice stretch. Oops. If your dough rips just pinch it back together it's dough it's forgivable so then we're just going to press and kind of tug here and there if we need to too much dough on one side but what you want to do is you want to get it thin ish it doesn't have to be super thin but you do want it kind of even so this is a little bit thick here and not very thick here so we're going to push some dough that way because we do want it to be about the same thickness so our roll looks at least half decent. There we go. Kind of give this a push. So you want it the same width all the way down. So obviously this curves in. We need to go out a little bit more. There we go. There, that's looking better. So it doesn't matter if it retracts a little bit because when you're rolling it, you can pull and roll. All right. Now I just have to get my basting brush, which I forgot. Luckily it's in the kitchen. It was just in the drawer. So now what we want to do, again, give this a good push. And then we're going to want to put our filling in here. So what we're going to do, tap it just so anything on the blade falls down. We are going to take our filling just gonna use my basting brush to help get it out of here. Dump it right in the middle, okay? You notice, see those pine nuts? I didn't chop them up too much because I like the texture. You can, you just don't want it too thin. So you don't want to take your pesto all the way down to nothing, okay? I like having a little bit of chunk in my pesto, a little bit of chunky pine nut. So I just worry it a little bit. Now you're gonna spread this. You can go all the way to one side, but you want to leave this side this side and this side free. You don't want to get all your pesto on those edges. One of the reasons is because when we roll it up, we do want to be able to seal the loaf. We don't want ends open and pesto leaking all over the pan. So we're not going to go all the way. We're going to make sure we spread our pine nuts pretty even. Okay, we don't want a whole cluster of them in one spot and then none in another. So once it looks about like that, you're okay. You can play with it a little bit if you like. I'm not going to bother because it's pesto roll. I'm eating it. It doesn't matter. So what you want to do now, this edge that you did get some of the filling on, pull that a little bit towards you and start rolling. Okay. Try to keep your roll tight and even. So if you notice there's a little thicker spot, kind of pull and play with it a bit. Pull this up, and then you're going to want to pinch your ends. You want to pull this up instead of rolling onto it, because if you roll onto it, you push your filling out. So pinch that seam really well. You don't want it coming undone. Okay, pinch, pinch, pinch. Lots of pinching. You do not want this seam to open up while it's rising or while it's baking. Now you want to finish sealing these ends. So kind of grab your end, 
kind of make it narrow and then fold it back in on itself and pinch. All right, I'll show you again with this side. You kind of grab your spot. There shouldn't be any filling here. So you kind of grab this, stretch it out a little bit and squish, then turn it back in on itself. Kind of press and tuck to get it underneath. You don't want that filling leaking out. Then you're going to want to just rock it back and forth a few times, seam side down. And if it's coming open, you take a minute to pinch it again. That's why you rock and you check. Okay, you check and see if your seam's coming open. You do need to check. Okay, that's looking good. My seam seems pretty stable. So we're going to grab our cookie sheet. We're going to lift this, put it on our cookie sheet. Now it's time to stick our pesto roll aside to rise. It's going to take about an hour. So put, put it somewhere safe, cover it with a damp tea towel if you need to. I'm gonna let it rise in my microwave, but cover it up so it doesn't dry out. Because if it dries out, it'll start cracking when it bakes and then all the filling will escape. So let it rise at least an hour. It may take a little extra because there is a filling in there. So we're just going to set that aside, make sure your seam side down so that when it rises, the seam is trapped. So put that aside to rise and we'll come and check on it in about an hour or so. Well, there we go. That puffed up really nice. Look at how nice that looks. It's ready to go in the oven. We are going to bake it at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it. You don't want it too dark, but you do not want to underbake this. So roughly 30 minutes, check it at 25, but expect it to take 30. Do not slash your bread. I know I slash my breads a lot to make them look pretty and help them expand. Don't slash this one because the chances of slashing too deep and exposing the filling are pretty high. So we're just gonna put it in the oven exactly as it is. We are not gonna glaze it and we're not gonna slash it. So we'll come back in about 30 minutes, see how it's done. All right, our bread is now baked. Our savory pesto roll is ready to eat. Now, after it comes out of the oven, you do want it to sit for 20 to 30 minutes just so the filling has a time, chance to set. All right, so this dough, this bread has been sitting for 30 minutes. It's still very warm, so it's still delicious. You can spread butter on it, but if you don't let it set, your filling's just gonna smear everywhere. That can still happen even if you wait 30 minutes. So we're just gonna give it a slice and take a look. There we go. Remember, let the knife do the work. You certainly don't have to. I have to cut a little bit deeper to see that a little bit better. Let's cut, do a slice. There we go. See, there we go. A nice, beautiful swirl of pesto. This is great with butter. You can even make sandwiches out of it. You can do basically anything you like with it, or you can just eat it. Around here, it pretty much just gets eaten. This will be gone in about 20 minutes from now. As soon as everyone realizes I've cut it, they're going to smell it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed making savory pesto roll with us today. I hope you'll try this one at home. It is really easy, really delicious, and it's a lot of fun. We'll see you tomorrow.